From the bayous in Louisiana to the Camber country up north, you'll find them out on the trap line, chasing furs to put up on the border. Mixing up another batch of that magical stuff, chilling around the fire after the show. Hey, it's Sarah and Jeff, and maybe a guest on the trapping radio. Hello, and welcome to Trapping Radio 2.0. Uh, this is Jeff Dunlap. I'll be running this operation this week, and uh, I hope uh, I hope that uh, you're looking forward to the hour, next hour as much as I am. Um, what I'll be covering is, I've been down to Iowa, so we had an Iowa trip. Uh, there's mul- multiple facets, uh, you know, throughout the whole thing. Um, you know, part of the Iowa trip, Nick and Jeff Haggerty were down there. Um, part of the trip, uh, they weren't. Uh, you know, then Sarah and her, and her sister were gone, you know, back up to Michigan to fill orders. So, you know, we'll be covering all that. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, cooking, uh, trapping camp breakfast. Um, you know, how to keep the mice out of your DP. Um, you know, trails and 220s versus DPs. You know, um and how to get, you know, bloodless kills on your coon. Uh, so we're going to be all over the place. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to start off with, uh, you know, uh, plugging our sponsors, uh, F&T Post.com. Uh, they're out of Alpena, Michigan. If you don't know them, you know, look them up. Their phone number is 989-354-8727. Um, they got just about everything you'd want for trapping, hunting with hounds, or get or uh, predator calling and so you know you can get anything you need from them um you know they're good guys uh they uh you know they'll they, if you say you got a problem you call up and they'll they'll uh you know help you work through it especially if you're a beginner trapper and need help uh they'll set you up with what you need um we also have funky trap tags out of uh guthrie center iowa um you know you just google funky trap tags and it'll pop right up and uh the guy that owns his name is alan sayer the guy that works for him his name is alan alan sayer is tall alan that works for him is really short so we call him big alan and little alan little alan likes to be called handsome alan so if you call there you know, say, is this handsome Alan? And I always tell him, well, that is insinuating that Big Alan is ugly. So what do we do? We call him Ugly Alan? And uh, he doesn't have an answer. He just wants to be called Handsome Alan. So anyways, those are our sponsors. Um, you know, if you'd like to be a sponsor, you know, get a, get a hold of us. And, uh, you know, we'll see if we, what we can work out. Um, you know, we're only going to take on so many because, uh, you know, I don't want to be having a 10-minute uh thing if i have to i'll just you know pay for everything my, myself just to uh you know keep it so it's not like that but uh you know we we definitely would welcome a couple of good good sponsors on on the show um well so we had uh the iowa trip um and what we did was we planned it all out um kind of what we we're going to do it was different this year than it was last year. Last year, me and Sarah went together. Nick and Haggerty went together, and they went, and you know we were split up, but we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. It was just like we were staying in the same house, um, you know, not really, you know, trapping together like we enjoy. So this year, we said we weren't going to do that. Um, what we were going to do was is all be together. And we knew that it's gonna you're gonna catch less fur if you got four trappers in one truck than two trappers in one truck and two trappers in another truck going separate ways. But it wasn't about you know it was about catching fur, but it wasn't about the catching the fur. You know we were willing to catch less to spend time together. 
and, and do do this stuff together. And that's exactly what happened. We caught less um, because of that. But uh, we had a great time and nobody cared. Um, you know, so none of us was out there. Um, you know, even we got to, got the coon soul. We weren't there just for the money. We were there to, you know, spend time with people we care about and um, make memories, um, you know, and uh, take pictures so we have them and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, our friends on Facebook could watch. We do lives and put up videos. Um, so that's what the trip was about, you know, um, and, and hopefully somebody, uh, that, you know, uh, has ever trapped before or sees one of the videos and gets into it and says, you know what, that, that looks like fun. You know, I want to go do that. Um, you know, so that our trip was a, a complete success on all points, um, from, from all those angles and also from the angle that, uh, we caught, we did catch a lot of fur, um, you know, not as many, not as much as some, but more than others. So I would say we were in the middle of the pack. <laughs> and, you know, um, for what we were doing, I think that's pretty damn good. And uh, there's just a lot of coon down there. Um, you know, I mean, early on, uh, beginning of season, up till the first freeze when they, you know, they hole up because it's cold. It's very easy trapping. Um, you know, you get out of the truck, set the trap, get back in the truck get to, you know go down the next coon trail set two two traps three traps whatever you're gonna put you know get in the truck move go down you know the hardest part is marking them and then you know find them when you come back um which i'll cover how we're, we were doing that um but the thing is after they froze and were in their dens for i don't know two to four days probably four days when they come out in Michigan, when that happens, them coon head right to the water. Okay, I mean I'm gonna go if that happens, I'm going right to the water. That's where the coon are gonna head. So in Iowa, I start setting on the water, dead traps, dead traps, dead traps. They're not moving. You know, I I I, I uh, was like, what is wrong with these Iowa raccoons? <laughs> you know, why aren't they moving? Um, you know, it just, when it went dead, it went dead. And, you know, it didn't matter if it was 220s, foot holds, uh, DPs, you know, they just, they weren't moving. And um, it just took them time to come back around and get back. I, I don't know if it's like the muskrats. Like, if muskrats, at least in this part of the country, if muskrats, if there's open water, they're building their houses in the fall, they're doing all these things. And then when they get ice and are locked under the ice for a little while, if that ice comes off, them rats, it takes them a few, you know, a few days to a week to start getting back into the open water kick. Um, you know, so, you know, I mean, it, it takes them a while to start making feed beds again, working on the houses, doing all the normal things that they would do in open water. Um, and I don't know if that's like that with the raccoons. I think it is. Um, you know, it just takes them even after the warm up. And the other problem is you run into like, say trapping in Iowa or cornfields that, um, let's say like season opened on, let's say uh, November 7th. I don't remember exactly what day, but let's say it, it season opened on November 7th. Well, say they had cut that corn on October 15th. Well, when they cut that corn, there's still lots of corn on the ground and stuff. Well, them coon are going out there for two weeks and still getting getting food and stuff. The longer it goes, since that every day that ticks off of, you know, that, there, that, that corn was cut, and them coon have a harder time finding food out there and can't just walk out there and get it off any stalk, I feel that you're losing a percentage of them coon are going to someplace else, you know. Um, they just, they're just peeling off. I don't know what the percentage is, but a percentage of them you're losing. And then the longer it goes, the harder, and you keep losing them. Where maybe you had eight or ten coon using that trail, where now, you know, there's one or two. Um, you know, and where exactly they go, I don't know. I just know they're not going down that trail. You know, because we put the camera on it and watched all this happen. You know, last year, I want to know how many coon will go down that trail and the more importantly, if eight coon went out, 
how many coon came back on that trail. And it was odd that them coon would move early. And in the middle of the night, there wasn't a lot of activity. And then they would move sometime, you know, right before daylight again. Um, you know, at least, you know, in, where the, they were crossing them trails. So, you know, I mean, it was right after it got dark and right before it got daylight was the key time they were moving. And, you know, but the inter one interesting thing was is the coon would go out. Say eight coon would go out on that trail. You'd assume that eight coon are going to come back unless one got a girlfriend. Uh, and, you know, so then it would be nine um, going back to their den tree, right? Where they come from. There might only be two coming down that trail, coming back. And there's no other, you know, or I'm, what I'm thinking about, there's no other, you know, real good trails down through there. So, you know, they're, they went off somewhere else to a different den they knew about and didn't even come back. So, you know, to say that, uh, you know, there, it's like oh, I just take my DP, I go stick it out there in the ground, and, you know, and I catch coon, and I catch a lot of coon. There's, there, if you want to be... I know naturalist is a bad word these days, but it used to be where if you were a naturalist, you, you know, learned about the wildlife. So, you know, using it in a, the old day way it was that you were a naturalist, um, you know, and not in the modern day psychopath uh, way, you know, you know, I, I am a naturalist on the aspect of I want to learn about the animals and, uh, you know, I want to learn where does that coon go? Why don't that coon come back? Um, you know, why does the muskrat building their house now? Why, why on a pond inland does a muskrat start building their house, let's say October 15th, but if you go over on Lake Huron, why on a bigger body of water don't they start building them till, you know, like after the opener of November 1st, you know, um, you know, I, I, I want to know that stuff, you know, I mean, is the daylight shining brighter on the bigger body of water and, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know, I, I but I I, I want to know all those things. Why do they do this? Why do they do that? You know, and uh, I, I get cur I'm curious about that stuff. So, and I think the better you know the animal, um, the better trapper you become. And it's interesting, you know. I mean, I'm not just out there just to, uh, you know, uh, kill stuff for blood and gore. You know, that's the last reason I'm out there. I I like being by the animals, same as all of you, and I also like to. Uh, you know, learn about the animals. And that's the best way um, to get them to step on a, you know, two or three inch pan and you got them figured out, you know, one one aspect uh, of that animal, you know. So, but uh, back to the, the trip, we, uh, like I say, we had a lot of fun. Um, every day Sarah would get up and we bought a Blackstone grill we're down there so we she we could have uh camp breakfast she got up every day cooked us breakfast it was awesome um you know we had uh french toast um uh, pancakes blueberry pancakes you know yeah i know i'm spoiled um you know we had bacon you know and all this stuff so it was it was great to get up every morning and you know have that and we took the time uh to to do that stuff because, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun to be able to sit down and, you know, cook on that. And you smell it cooking. And, you know, we're all sitting there, you know, uh, ragging at each other. Some are hungover from the night before. Um, so they really get abused. So, you know, it, it, it was worth the time. It, and it cost us fur by stopping and having breakfast. We didn't care. We didn't care. That wasn't what was important. The important thing was is to eat that damn food. I mean, to spend time together. <laughs> so, um, you know, but it was really nice of Sarah to do that. I mean, she, she woke up early, and Sarah is not a morning person. Once she gets up, she does not quit all day long, all night long. She can go, 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 go. But in the morning, it's like, because I'll get up, go out, have coffee, and when she gets up, I'm like, hello, and that's all you say. <laughs> you don't have a conversation. You don't get into nothing technical. You give her to her time. Um, so, you know, but she got up early, and she went right out there and was kicking ass, and, you know, it was it was great. Um, she's a hell of a cook. Um, but, you know, it was, it was fun doing that. Um, 
and some of the stuff we caught, uh, uh, yeah, we caught lots of coon. And if you if you don't know anything about the coon, there's a, the golden triangle they call it, and I don't know exactly the golden triangle where it starts, where it stops, but I know where we were at. We're in the golden triangle, and those are like the best coon in the country. You know, uh, you know they want them coon when they when they don't want any coon anywhere they want those coon um you know they're a heavier coon with excellent color and you know they're just a they're a beautiful work of art and um you know so that's the area we're in so that's the type of coon we were we were catching towards the end you know you started seeing some uh you know yellower ones coming in and stuff but you know they still were you know 99.9 percent awesome and uh so we, we were catching those, but then we started catching the skunks, and then we started targeting the skunks, um, you know, uh, either, you know, with 220s or foothold, and then we started even catching them in the DPs, um, you know, it was nice in the 220s, uh, the RBGs, because, you know, I mean, they're, they're dead, you ain't got to deal with them, you just throw them in the back of the truck, and they just, you know, squirt a little bit, so they don't really stink that bad. Some do, but most of them don't. Um, you know, especially if you get a good headshot on them. Um, but, you know, uh, I went and bought, we, and the, the ones who are, are alive, we usually, Sarah, Sarah is quick on the draw. She likes to shoot. I mean, she's got a, a nice rifle, and she's not afraid to pull the trigger on it. And uh, so you got to be really quick to, you know, get her to stop and not, not gun them down. Um, so... What we did was, is you know, most time when we could stop her from, you know, shooting, is uh, use like acetone with a needle. Now, I know in some states it's not legal, but you know, and I've heard in Michigan it's not legal. Uh, my thing is, is when I go out there, being 100% honest, when I go out there and I'm gonna kill an animal, the quickest way to kill that animal is between me and God, and the state doesn't need to be involved in it. Um, you know, if, if, if they don't like it, or whatever, I'm not going out flashing it around. Well, I kind of did, but um, I kind of did. <laughs> but, you know, doing videos on it. But I didn't show poking the animal or nothing. So, um, and you, they, they can't prove what state you're in. So, <laughs> but I just think it's, uh, you know, the fastest, best way to kill them skunks is with that acetone. I mean, it, it knocks them down. Um, and I, but I found another way that has worked and people keep saying I'm lucky to, you know, uh, they didn't spray, you know, if, if you shoot 23 skunks and then, the, and you, all right, well, it was 24 skunks, one sprayed with a headshot that Nick Ernie shot it in the head. So, but it, the way I did it, I didn't have one spray. So. What I did was I went and got a Gamo pellet gun. Uh, I don't remember the model. Uh, it's got it. It came with a scope, but it's got sights on it. It's not. It's like thirteen hundred feet per second. And what I went and did was they have uh, a pellet called uh, it's a Gamo pellet called a Lethal. They they they're subsonic. Which I don't really know what that means. I think it means it, it goes faster than the speed of sound is what I. So I mean it's kicking it out there. You know, where you get the report back where it goes, pew, you know, yeah, I said, pew. and, but the thing is, is they have another one, uh, I think it's platinum, platinum pellet, anyways, it's another subsonic, but you want to go with the subsonic, they have all these other ones that are really cool with the red points and all that, they don't work worth a shit, especially for dis dispatching coon, um, you know, but, it's like with the skunks, I'll go to get up, the upwind from them, wait for them to move, or try and get a shot where I'm shooting them in the lungs like I would a coyote. You know, I'm trying to hit them in the lungs, hard area. And when you, and if, and you can tell right away, I mean, if you wait like t 10 seconds and you're looking at them and they don't start putting their head down, you know, because I mean, they're getting short of breath, I give them another pellet. So, you know, I don't stand around there and wait. I mean, if they ain't doing something, I'm shooting again. And, you know, and I haven't had one spray. And they, they put their head down and they expire. You know, within 30 seconds, 40 seconds. You know, you can tell it's over. Um, 
You know, so, you know, the thing is, is uh, with the price of skunk essence, you know, it's going for 15 to $20 an ounce, uh, you know, skunk hide, especially the white ones, you know, that got good markings and stuff are going for, you know, uh, let's say $25, you know, at like an auction where you have people there wanting to bid on them. I've seen them go higher, um, you know, but, you know, 8 to $10, you could definitely get out of a skunk. So, you know, if you got a half an ounce, uh, you know, say ten dollars. Uh, you know, eight, uh, say you got eight dollars out of your your some good good run of skunk, put up skunks, which I think you get more than that if you really looked around. Um, you know, so I mean that's eighteen dollars if you sold the fat, blah 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 blah. So you're up in the twenty some dollar range, skulls, peckers, uh, you know, whatever else these people buy. Um, you know, see, you're you're you know a skunk is a value one of the valuable animals out there now. Um, so it's definitely, definitely worth going to do. And, um, I think that, you know, um, if you go out and target them and you got set up with a gamo pellet gun, are you ever going to have one spray? Yeah. I'm sure at some point I'm going to have one spray, uh, or many spray, but, you know, you can go buy that gun for, I don't know what it was, like 180 bucks. You know, it, it will pay for itself with the essence, you know, uh, depending on how many skunks you get. If you get lots of skunks, it'll pay quick. If you uh, get uh, one skunk every year, it's going to take you, you might just want to use a club. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so, if you're trying to pay for it, you know, you pay for the, the, the club a lot quicker. Um, but... But I use it to use that gamo to dispatch uh, raccoons. Um, you know, uh, I just you know, right between the eyes. You know, and a lot of times I'll walk up there and give them a, a second one. Um, you know, right behind the ear. You know, just just to make sure that they're dead. The pellet the pellets are fairly cheap. You know, and I like to pull that trigger. So, I guess I'm like Sarah, and uh, you know so. If you're saving the skulls, which we did this early when Haggerty and them were down there, we went and got um, uh, the death rays. Um, Lee Steinmeier was the first came out with them, and Kendall Overmeyer bought the company from Lee. So, you know, sometimes when people switch, uh, stuff isn't as good. We I used the ones Kendall made, and I had an original. Uh, four footer from uh lee and uh you know they look different as far as the colors and stuff but quality i couldn't see a difference uh you know so kendall's kept the quality in them um and if you're running especially a shorter line you you know they work good uh because you on the raccoons um because you can just put it over their head after they grab it 22 times and twist the cable and everything um and, and, you know, you get that cinch down, use like the caulking gun handle, you know, uh, put it really as tight as you can get it on there. And, you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's over quick. Um, you know, you're cutting something's air and blood off and, you know, I mean, it's, it's over quick, quick, quick. But, uh, if you order one of them they're, and they're not cheap, um, you know, but if you order one, you know, make sure you get, you know, uh, two to four extra cables with it because when you're first learning um what will happen is that coon will get that and it starts bending the cable then it, you know it twists and it's hard to get over their head um you know so you're going to mess them up I, the only thing i tell you is at first you're going to be hesitant when you go to walk up on that coon and you're going to be hesitant you know trying to you know like play and get it over their head because you're not used to doing it but the thing is is they learn and they learn by doing and at first when you walk up there they don't know what that is you got they don't know what you are um they just know you know um you know you're there and you just walk right up there with confidence and slip that over their head and choke them right you know put it choke right down on them okay if you walk up there and start doing the playing around thing trying to get it over their head and this they start put then they will start putting their hand up and they're learning and every time you try to get it over their head they swat it away 
and you know get a hold of the cable and they're pulling on it and biting on it and crimping it and you know so just walk up there with confidence slip it right over their head pull it and tighten that right down you know the, the more you dink around the more that cable is going to get kinked but i will say you know we were you know killing a lot of coon um you know with them so what we had nick had ordered two and i had my original ones we had three of them that you know were throw one in the back of the truck he's pretty much dead uh you know and then do the next one you know and then rotate them off so if you're if you were we're going to do a lot of coon you'd want more than one um, probably, or you'd be waiting on the side of the road, you know, to make sure you take it off that, you know, you're not going to come back and the coon's gone when you, when he, you know, uh, get to the next spot because he started breathing again, <laughs> you know, so, but I will say that's probably on larger numbers of, of coon processing them and everything, having zero blood, I mean, there's all the blood still inside, um, you know, it's, re it was really nice, you know, rather than, you shot all these, and the blood's running in the back of the truck. There was no blood in the hardly in the back of the truck. It, 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 there was no blood on the fur. It was just like having a really nice raccoon with no blemishes on it. You know, it was it was really nice. Um, you know, and you know, I mean, uh, are some people going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah? I'd like to do. I, you know, I'd rather just shoot them. I don't care. I don't care. If you shoot them with shotguns, I don't care what you use. I just telling you, you know, if you don't want the blood and, you know, and getting all over, it's a nice way to do it, you know, and, um, I was wanting to get a, I, I was shooting them, went to that. And then when they left, I didn't have another cable for my four foot, four footer, because if you got one of the original four footers, uh, uh, Kendall and them don't have the replacement ends for them. I got to call Lee Steinmeier and try and get a hold of him, see if he's got any left, is what Kurt told me. Um, so we ordered uh, two more of the uh, two footers, I think it was, which I don't know. I think I'd rather have the three footers, but because uh, I'd rather be three foot away from some gnashing teeth than uh, two foot. <laughs> so. Um, you know, but that, you know, the thing is, is they were great. Um, you know, and, um, we don't sell them. Um, you know, uh, Kendall don't know I'm saying this. He ain't, he ain't given no deals or anything. Uh, you know, because we're saying that when Lee, when Lee Steinmeier had it, I told, I did a video and said, I liked them for coyote trapping, you know, which they, they were nice not to have blood all over a coyote, you know. I mean, you, you think a uh, coon's a mess with blood all over it. A coyote's worse. So, you know, um, so that's the different ways we were shooting them, um, you know, and, you know, uh, using the death ray. Uh, in case you are interested in the death rays, you can look up KO traps uh, or something like that, you know, um, and get a hold of, uh, you know, Kurt. Kurt's uh, Kendall's brother, real nice guy too. Um, so um, one thing down there is in that farm country is a lot of mice, you know, and it's like we're setting DPs, you know, and, you know, the thing is, is the mice were getting into the bait and everything else. And it's a pain in the ass. You know, you, gotta, you ain't got nothing, so you walk down there and – once the mice find it or the rats or whatever the hell they are, uh, you know, they start cleaning it out. I would fill it up with bait, say at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, come back the next day, and all the bait's gone. <laughs> you know, and I'd even sprinkle some, I'd sprinkle some on the outside, and it's all gone. Um, you know, you can put, use them caps. Um, you can, you know, people use tin foil. They've took uh, paper, 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 uh, or styrofoam cups and put over, which isn't a good idea because every coon you catch and it's all over the landowner's property or right alongside the road. And, you know, I mean, you know, you, you don't want to, you know, have that, um, you know, so, you know, there's different ways you can do it. Uh, I mean, you could use a dowel in there, um, 
you know, with make your own caps. But uh, it, it's hard on running large amounts of anything to have, you know, put caps on or do this or do that. If you're if you're running, you know, a, a bunch of uh, large amounts of traps, it, it gets harder to do anything like that. Um, you know, sometimes it's just easier just to rebate the traps. Um, you know, it's a pain in the ass, but that sometimes that's just the way it is. Um, you know, I don't want to go buy, you know, three or four hundred, um, you know, Z tra- Z trap caps. You know, I, it's not that they, they won't work; they work good. It's just I don't want to deal with three or four hundred Z trap caps. I'd rather just put the bait in there, uh, or or when they find it, pull the trap and move on to someplace else before they find it. Catch, try and catch the coon and move on to the next spot. You know, I'm. I'm not, you know, planning on being there for six months, um, only a few days. You know, sometimes it'll go, you know, a week. But, you know, trying to clean all of them out if you're on private property. But, uh, you know, we definitely had problems with the mice. Uh, In northern Michigan where I'm at, we have some problems with the mice, but uh, more with red squirrels. Because you'll come there and there'll be a fluffy tail from a red squirrel be sticking out of your DP where you got, uh, you know, a little too far in that trap and uh you know decided he wanted to go through the grinder so <laughs> well, his choice you know there's a price to pay for everything you do and <laughs> that was the final final price he had to pay go through the grinder um you know uh the other thing is that we were finding was is Put, taking them traps and putting them on full cock. And what I mean by that is when you set it, it's set, you know, your dog is all the way, your trigger is all the way into the, the, the dog, and it's set as heavy as it can be. I like to back that off where you have, like, a, a lighter trigger because a lot of these DPs are made overseas uh, or whatever, and when you go to press that down and it's hard to set, if you, I'm not saying stick your finger in there, uh, but if you did, in fact, I'm telling you don't. So if you do this, it's on you because I'm telling you, that's not what I'm saying. But if you did stick your finger down in there and pull up on that, how many pounds of pressure does it take to set that off? You know, it takes, some of them takes quite a bit. So, you know, if you got it where it's, uh, you know, set hair tr- more hair trigger. You know, it's going to take less pounds of pressure to set it off, and you know, it's just something to think about on your line. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's the way I like to do it. I got different things I like to do. Sarah puts hers straight up and down, and you know, I like to put mine on angle. Like if they're looking into it, they can dig into it easier. I'm sure they can't, but because you know generally uh you know we go someplace and you know sarah picks the be- better location for coon uh we get there she's got the coon my best bet is hope i have we have a double uh you know she is a killer on the coon she was before i even met her um so you know um it's but we both agree on the uh you know backing them off so that they're hair trigger you know Sticking them in the ground and locations and stuff, eh, we vary on it, but we both agree on the uh, the hair trigger is you know a key point, especially with a, a heavy a heavy trigger DP. You know that uh, you know if you can't force that down easily, and it's like sticking, it's going to be hard for them to pull that up. And you know it's just something to think about, especially. You know, if you got a lot of skunks in your area, um, you know, we caught shitloads of skunks in it. And, um, you know, you want to, I want, I personally want to catch all of them, you know, especially like we talked about 20 some, 20 some dollars a piece. I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty damn good. Um, and, you know, it's like we put up, uh, different videos and, you know, um, you know, we're trying to get, have somebody, let's say like a deer hunter, see the video and say, you know what, I would like to take my kids out and do that. Um, you know, we want to get people involved, inspired. Um, you know, where this isn't some, uh, 
uh, unattainable thing that you you can't go out and do, you know, that it's tough. Um, we want people to say, you know what, if that dipshit from northern Michigan can do this, I can do it too. And, you know, and he looks like he's having fun. I could use that in my life, and that, you know, to get people involved. Um, you know, and I mean, and of course we want to sell products and, you know, all that. Um, but, you know, we put up the videos, but then the next thing happens is we get attacked by the antis. They don't even bother me anymore. I don't give a shit. Uh, Facebook has got it where, um, you know, uh, I can't delete some of the comments and, you know, they're, they're a freaking nightmare. That's why I'm moving a lot of shit over to YouTube. I'm sure they will be a pain in the ass in the end, but they're less of a, it's like the, the, the lesser evil devil, you know, and, um, you know, so I've been putting up a lot more stuff on YouTube and, you know, on there. And, but the thing is, is the antis, like I say, don't bother me. It's what, but what happens is, is you get, um, I don't know if they're trappers because I didn't, I've, I, I don't know any of these when they put the comments. So it could be an anti saying it, but um, most time the comment will go something to the effect of, I sold, used to sell coon for, in 1982 for $40. You know, they're not worth nothing now. Really, really. So between 1982 and today, Coon have not been worth anything. You, sir, are an effing idiot. Because there's been like uh, six or seven fur booms that I know of. Uh, and and, and, the, and the, it didn't even crash till uh, the, the f fall of, uh, of, uh, 80, fall of 87. So I guess I'm confused about, you know, the 1982 part. <laughs> but, uh... You know, the thing is, is uh, in 2012-13, I've already talked about on, you know, one of the, something about how much I made, you know, that year just in Louisiana, $27,000 in two and a half months. Um, you know, and that wasn't what I made in Michigan, and I made more in Michigan. You know, fur prices was up. Uh, are they the greatest today? No, they're not the greatest today. But, uh, you know, if you just wait only for when the, the price goes up, uh, you know, how, how is that, how does that work? You, we, everybody else just keeps it running, running for you. So you could come and make a couple bucks when it goes back up. I mean, that that's fine if that's the way you want to do it, but don't, I mean, why are you on a trapping site? Why don't you just come on the trapping site or give your trapping comments when the prices are up? I mean, I, I guess I, I, I don't understand why people go on a trapping site and then, it's like I see a guy in Missouri on Trapping Talk. He puts up, which I'm in control of. I went through and deleted a bunch of comments. And, you know, he puts up, him and his buddy catch a bunch of coon. Uh, and they they have a great time, I'm sure, setting the traps. They're excited. They did really good at catching them. And then people say, well, you could buy a hamburger. You could do this. You could do that. You know, I mean, this is a freaking trapping site where people are supposed to be showing fur, and then you have trappers saying, why are you trapping, basically? It, it makes no sense to me. It, I mean, I don't, I mean, I can't imagine a deer hunters, I could see them saying, well, yours is too small, blah, 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 because people are assholes, but, you know, put up a deer picture and say, why did you shoot a deer? You're not making any money off of that deer. You you know, uh, you know, ribeyes are on sale at Myers for nine ninety nine a pound. Why would you go? Sh why are you shooting the deer? Idiot. You know, because I like to go out there and sit. You know, I don't know. Maybe I like to be alone and look at porn while I'm, I'm deer hunting. I don't know. You know why somebody does what they do, but why do you care? You know, I mean, people really are. Uh, for lack of a, a better word from a, a GED with a can-do attitude person, they really are pathetic. You know, that's my word of today. And that word is brought to you by the letter P. So...
I know I'm getting worked up, but it does piss me off. Um, you know that uh, you know to see some guy go out there because it, it's fun going doing this stuff. But I'll tell you what, it's a lot of work. It ain't deer hunting, um, you know, or hound hunting where if it's raining and you don't want to go, you ain't got to go. Once you set them traps, you committed yourself. You know, rain, snow, wind, or what tornado, whatever, you committed yourself, and it's work. And, you know, uh, so to have somebody denigrate somebody about uh, them out trapping, you know, like I say, really does piss me off. And, uh, like I say, I go through and delete their comments. I even kick some of their dumb asses because, uh, you know, I'm not having somebody that... It, <laughs> that went out and busted their ass in the rain. I mean, the guy looks like a drowned rat, you know. And then he's got trappers, supposed trappers, uh, you know, saying shit to him. I'm like, I, no, I can't deal with this. I don't want to. I'm embarrassed that, that these dipshits are on my site uh, denigrating this poor guy, you know. So, uh, that's that's your your rant for today. <laughs> Um, the other thing is, as far as, uh, like with coon trapping, um, and I will say on a, another note on the price wise, uh, even though we ain't out there doing it just for the money, which is obvious, but, uh, I've had, a, uh, two different fur buyers call me trying to buy my coon this year, um, already and tell me that the, there, there's a movement in the, in the coon market. You know, and there'll be some people, I see them on Facebook, you know, guys that buy fur and say, oh, there's no market for coon. They have no market for coon. You know what? If you have coon and you want to sell them, and you're in a northern state with good coon, I mean, if you're in Alabama with shit coon, chances are they're right. There's no market for them coon. At least none that I know of, you know. But you got a market for carcasses, but... If you go, if you're in Michigan, Wisconsin, if you go to like to the, the state fur sales, I mean, last year guys sold lots of coon at them state fur sales. You know, there's other other markets that show up. So, you know, this, uh, you know, I mean, I uh, Gronwald uh, is running routes. He's gonna be at Funky's, uh, I think today. You know, when I'm recording this, um, you know, he's got routes all over. You know, Trevor Barnes has got routes all over. Um, you know, that's just, that's just two that I, I, off the top of my head, I'm not saying to sell to either one of them. I'm just saying, you know, there's options out there. I know Trevor's buying coon, um, cause he stopped at F and T's and had his route there and he uh, bought them. So, you know, does he want a bunch of, uh, blue kits? I'm sure he doesn't. Is he going to pay you $50 for a coon? I'm sure he isn't. But if you want to get some of your gas money back, after you went out and had your good time, that's that's the way I would go with it. Um, so we're setting these trails down there, and you drive down the road, you look for a, a good coon trail, and the thing is, is like we talked about where them coon, um, you know, were there earlier, and there'll be old trail, old trail, old trail, and some of them are hard to tell, but if we just got it where if there's leaves in it, we don't set it. It's kind of like a muskrat um, runway. If it if it looks old and has you know silt in it and stuff, it's or a, a muskrat feeder, you know has brown. They're not there no more. You know they're dead, or they moved on. And it's the same way with them coon trails. If there's leaves in them, not because they got so many coon down there. You know uh, you could always catch one somewhere, but it's not the best trail. I would. I don't want to set the shit. I want to set the cream of the crop and move the cream of the crop and move to the cream of the crop and move to the cream of the crop. You know, take the best, move on. And you know, if you're just setting shitty trails, you know, I mean, uh, you're you're not ever on the cream of the crop because you're just setting shit because there's a lot of it down there. Um, but you know, we had it sometimes where you know I was setting two twenties and I was setting. Um, you know, DPs, and then, you know, you got to be 200 yards away from the end of the driveway of a residence or other rules. If you're going to trap Iowa, you can look up. Um, 
you know, you can't shoot your gun, which is one reason I went with a pellet gun, because down there, you know, that's not considered a firearm, so you could shoot it closer. Um, but anyways, so I sent DPs, I was setting 220s, and, you know, we're legal. And the thing is, is sometimes the 220s just beat the living shit right out of the DPs, you know, on the catch rate. Other times the DPs beat the shit out of the 220s, you know. So I would say, you know, percentage-wise, it probably figured out. I mean, the 220s probably won percentage-wise by a little bit. Um, but if, you know, on the catch rate per trap, um, you know, but not by, not by much, you know. Um, you know, I also found if, you know, I took some, uh, you know, DP sauce and squirted it around you know, the trap, or, you know, put some bait on the ground, um, you know, to get them to stop, I, I did a lot better with the DPs. If I just kept the bait just in the trap, put no training trailing scent down or anything, I didn't do as well. I needed something to get them to stop. And especially as the season went on later, um, like uh, last week, um, you know, I had a lot better, you know, catch rate, um, you know, with using something on the ground or, or some scent, you know, sprayed around. So, you know, even if you're using like a, a cat food or something like that, um, you know, having like a training scent. I know some people, you know, uh, you know, say fish oil. My thing is, is that fish oil, I don't like using that in the DPs because you can never get all of it out of the damn thing for a long time. And then it gets on the, the sp- the springs and I'm trying to set them and the shit's slipping. I don't want something that won't wash off easily. You know, that's why I use the DP sauce down the trap. You know, I mean, it'll take a rain, but it don't take a garden hose, you know? So, um, you know, that's that. uh, And uh, my thing is I've been down all these roads before and that's why I, you know, a lot of this stuff that, I produce and stuff, it's because of uh, nightmare situations that I've been in, you know, and, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to squirt the fish oil on the DPs. I was, that when the DPs come out, that was like the first thing I did. I couldn't even hardly get the damn thing set, <laughs> you know, so, um, I will say, like, uh, you know, I mean, the guy. A lot of the guys down there in Iowa go with, uh, you know, like, like using uh, laminated one and a halves in tra- You know, setting them for footholds and stuff, and you know, in, in the coon trails and stuff. You know, it's whatever anybody wants to do. What whatever gives you confidence. You know, um, that's the main thing, and it it doesn't matter if you do that or you know, use DPs or, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you you know, you're going to catch some and you're going to miss some. You're not ever going to catch them all. You know, I have a guy send me thing. Do you think that using them DPs that, you know, you have coon walk by? Absolutely, I think I have coon walk by. You'd have to be a blaming idiot, especially since I put cameras on them and know that they walk by. Uh, you know, but I ma- it allows me to make adjustments and I learn. And... You know, and, but you'd have to be an idiot to think that you don't have any misses in 220s, which we have on camera of happening, uh, or that they don't step over your one and a half that you got buried. Um, you know, I've seen Otter where they came up there and I had a blind set and they looked right at the blind set and went around it, you know, and it's all blended in. You know, they knew something wasn't right. It looked great to me, but to that Otter, it didn't look so good. And that you'd have to be an idiot to think that you don't miss any in footholds. Um, you're always going to miss them. You're never going to catch them all. All you can do is go out there and keep your traps working. And, you know, I don't know, be like me. Pray for a stupid one. <laughs> That's what I do. I, I just want to catch the dumb ones. I don't want to catch the most toughest to catch anything. I want to catch dumb or uneducated or foolhardy and put them in the truck and go down the road and catch another dumb one <laughs> you know um i don't want to i don't want to find a coyote that is the smartest coyote in the world and you know you know 
and try and capture that one. I just want to catch the dumb ones. And, you know, it makes the pile bigger. It makes it more fun for me. I don't want to be aggravated by uh, the smartest of anything. I already am because uh, Sarah's the smartest one in our relationship. So uh, I've already got to deal with that here. So I don't need to go out in the field and do that. So, um, this year, uh, we used, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, Nick Ernie's traps, RBGs, but I went and started using some bridgers, some 220 bridgers. And I know that some of you are cringing because of the, you know, <laughs> I say that because when you buy the 220 bridgers, you know, there's a lot of slop to them. Um, you know, the, 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 the triggers, you know, and I fully agree. I mean, uh, are they aggravating? Yeah. But I, I'm going to tell you something. Um, with them bridgers, what I did was that I took and put them in a vise. The, the, let me think how I'm going to explain this. I took the bracket that your triggers come down from, I put that in a vise and I got that to push and I pushed the top of that in, which the top is where your dog would fit on to that little notch. I pushed that down with the vise. I tried, I tried, I beat it down with a hammer on a, on a, another vise down to Iowa uh, or on a um, trailer hitch and it, it worked, but the, the vise worked the best. But if you crimp that down just so it's flat on top, not so it won't rotate on the on the bar, and then check it, I'll tell you what, I, you know, them are the best triggers in the world. <laughs> when you do that, honest to God, they don't move. They're like the ones you filed almost. They're better than the ones you filed because you don't overfile these. Um you know, so they are the best triggers in the world. I mean, it's a pain in the ass doing it, but when you get it done, they are amazing. Um, I mean, there ain't no slop in them things, and when they go off, it's a head catch. Um, you know, so, you know, I, you know, if you don't want to work on traps, I don't like working on traps, but this is some. This is more like uh, man cave, uh, or what would you say? Uh, caveman working on traps when you're bending shit on them and stuff so it's kind of fun you know um so you know the, but the thing is is if you if you do that and if you got some now if you do that on them you know you'll be really happy you know just don't go too far because you'll pop that rivet so but it, it, it like i say they're the most amazing triggers once you bend the shit out of them so so if you got some or you're going to buy some, uh, you know, you're going to have to bend them to get them right. Um, and I know you can say, well, you can file them and do this. I've done all that shit. The only way that I find is the caveman way to fix them things where they are great. And I'm not, I don't care what anybody says. I'm not doing it another way. Um, I got them all bent <laughs> and, I, and I like them bent. So, um, but I know, you know, for years, you know, you know, like them triggers move, you know, five inches either way, you know, but it's like, uh, you know, if you, if you don't want to do all that, then buy RBG, you know, spend more money and buy RBG. If you want a cheaper trap, you know, sometimes you have to work on it. I mean, the Duke traps ain't perfect for sure. You know, um, there's, you know, you got to work on stuff. If you, you want, you don't either, either pay or work on it. That's, that's your options or just have shit run off with your stuff. That's, that's your options, in my opinion. And that's only it is my opinion. Um, but getting back to, you know, like the, the coon trapping, um, so we, we covered the hair trigger. Uh, I think it makes a big difference. Um, the, the thing is, is if you have a really good coon trail, you set that up, and it's just beat down into the mud, coon tracks everywhere. You set it up, you come back tomorrow, and you ain't got shit. You come back the next day, you ain't got nothing. Just because 
you go there it's at a trap you don't know how often them coon are coming through like i told you we see 10 coon go out and two come back you know they're, they're they might not be coming going down that trail it, it, you know but when they, they will come from the other trail down that trail at some point and that's when you'll get them so don't get discouraged um you know i mean people make it sound like uh going catching you know raccoons uh doesn't require any skill whatsoever and you know sometimes the only skill you need is patience um you know the patience is a big thing in trapping it's easy to get impatient and get depressed and you know why ain't i catching them you know the hell with this trapping i can't catch it blah 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 you know and that's all stuff i've said <laughs> so um you know, everybody goes through that. The people who say they don't go through that either ain't never really trapped or they don't they don't catch shit and they're not setting for shit. You know, if, you know, everybody, who the hell hasn't been depressed about, you know, checking your traps? You go out and check 50, tra 60 traps and you don't catch a damn thing. You think that's great? You know, bullshit. Bullshit. I, it, it drives me insane, you know, trying to figure out. You know, why aren't they moving? Is it this? Is it that? The moon's too bright. The moon's not bright enough. Uh, you know, the wind's blowing too hard. The wind's not blowing at all. It's too warm. It's too cold. There's ice on the ponds. You know, the coon don't like to walk in the snow. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you just keep the traps working. And it's like I always say, when things are going good, set more traps. When things are going bad, set more effing traps. Right? That's that's the key to it. Set more traps. Set more traps. Set more traps. So, you know, I mean, do I think the 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 moon affects them coon? Absolutely, I do. Do a lot of other people think that it doesn't? Yeah. Do I think that they're wrong? Yeah. Do they think I'm wrong? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, I just I think it affects them. Um, you know, do I think that uh, you know on a windy night? You know, things don't move that good. Yep, I do believe, I really do believe that. If it's super windy and they can't hear, uh, you know, I don't think they like that. I will say that the best, one of the best nights we had down there was like 40 mile an hour winds and the next morning there, there's coon all over the place in the trap. So, you know, do I still believe that? Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you got to go out and do what gives you confidence. And you got to make sets and check them traps so you got to have the confidence you know that even though tonight might not be the best night at some point it will be um so uh the only other thing i'd like to cover is um again about the skunks that you know it's one thing to go out and you know you make a coyote set you come there and you got a skunk um you know, it's like you go out and set a DP for a coon and you catch a, a skunk. That is not making you a, a skunk trapper, you know. And uh, they, they've been looked at as like a trash animal, like a possum. Like different people laugh at me about, you know, they got a possum lure. You know, I got a possum lure. You know, a lot of homeowners buy that because, you know, they, you know, see it and that's what they, you know, they want to catch. And, it, you know, it does work good on possum, but. And people laugh about that, but I ask guys, how many possums have you ever went out and targeted on purpose and caught? Uh, none. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You other than apparently, uh, you know, you should uh, change what you're doing because uh, you know you're you're not even getting your target animal. You're, you're you're after coyotes and you only caught possums. So maybe you should you know change your target. <laughs> animal right so and i'm being facetious and joking because i mean what you know very little can you put down a hole that it will interest a coyote that has zero interest to a possum right so but you know unless you go out and try and target possums you know uh you know it, it, it's easy to laugh at but uh but the point being is with the iowa in the skunks you know, we started making, um, you know, looking at where the skunk's at. And we started finding that, you know, if there's a, like a, a culvert on a driveway, 
you know, going into a field or something. Them skunks were living in them. So I would slow down and start looking for them, you know, where something's going in and out of there. Because, you know, you normally, because you're trapping coon, you think it's coon. It wasn't coon. I start looking, you know, in the hard ground from all summer uh, in the, you know, in the mud that had dried. And it was skunk tracks going in and out of there, you know. And I would look for the skunk tracks. And, you know, so, uh, you know, the thing is, is we started, like, targeting, you know, where them skunks were you know, and trying to figure all that out, and, you know, and, um, it's like, uh, you know, Sarah's on a women's page, I think it's the Wisconsin women's page, they're, they're smart, I mean, they're going out and targeting skunks, she tells me about it, you know, these women are doing this and this and this, and, you know, and they, uh, the thing is, is they're smart, I mean, they're going out targeting skunks, and they know they can sell this, all the stuff, and make money doing it, um and and have fun doing it you know so i mean you know hats off to the wisconsin women camp people they uh they they i I, them up to wisconsin they really got it going on you know um sarah tells me about that and i see you know different pictures of the women that pop up and sarah says well she was she went to the the camp and you know the training camp or whatever you know um I, i i think that's great and uh you know, and uh, I know a couple of them listen to the show, and, um, you know, I would really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, and so it, it's really nice to have fun and go out and catch something. And, you know, I never care what I'm trapping. And the, it seems to be the same way with the uh, Wisconsin women. Some of them, you know, they they just don't want to go trapping and capture something and have fun doing it, you know, make a few bucks. Because, like, if, if you ask me, if I'm weasel trapping, you ask me, what's your favorite thing to trap? Weasels. If I'm trapping muskrats, and you ask me what ta- what I, is my favorite, I'll say muskrats. <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever I'm, I don't give a shit if we go out in the field next door with mouse traps and we're trying to figure out how to catch a shitload of mice, um... I'm happy as a little little clam, you know. I just want to trap. Um, I don't want to sit over there and call them in or shoot them or nothing. I like the coon calling, but other than that, you know, I just want to trap. I'm a trapper. I got to trap, and I don't care what we trap. I just want to go out there and figure them out and, and monopolize and see how many we can catch, you know, um, and, and figure the animal out. So everything's my favorite, and uh, and I, I like that about the. The, the, that's kind of how some of the Wisconsin women up there are doing from what I see from Sarah telling me and stuff. So hats off, ladies. You're doing great. And don't let the haters get to you. Um, they're just sitting at home uh, with time to uh, criticize what you're doing. You're out there doing it and ain't got time to be doing that shit. So you just go out there and have fun, and that's all that matters. They're just, they're just, just hateful people. So... Anyways, um, we're going to try and, uh, I've said this before, so it's probably a lie, but uh, we're going to try and uh, have it where, you know, we start uh, having the more regular podcast. It, it, I can make 101 excuses. It's just uh, lack of priorities, getting it done, to be honest with you. Um, it needs to be more of a priority. It isn't very important to me. Um, you know, um, I could tell you time and time. Listen, I got time to watch Law and Order. I got time to do everything else. I need to make time for this. And I apologize to uh, everybody who likes listening to this and people that have supported me and Clint and Sarah by buying our products through the years that I haven't made it a priority. Um, and uh, I'll try to do better um, in, uh, you know, in making it, making it a priority. Because uh, it is very important to me, um, to, you know, to have a podcast out you know representing you know uh, us and you guys and stuff and so I apologize and uh, you know I'll try and do better can't say that I will do better but I, I certainly will try I really will try yeah uh, I, I do that's why I do my, my videos are three and four minutes long because I can keep a clear train of thought that long if you can see right now Sarah made me notes so that I could 
uh, bounce back to the, you know, the the notes. And I wrote them all down, you know. I told her what I wanted to talk about, and then she gave me the pointers of what I could talk about, and, you know, and then uh, things worked out fairly well. I kind of stayed on topic, I would say, 62.3% of the time. <laughs> so, anyways, I really do appreciate y'all. Um, you know, I, uh, I look forward to seeing all of you at conventions and stuff this summer, and, you know, I don't look forward to driving to conventions or setting up or standing there but i do the only reason i really probably keep going is because i enjoy it's the only chance out some of you i'll get to see and hear about the next year and that's the reason why i like going to conventions the rest of it not so much but i i i, I trappers are my only people i have and some of them are a real pain in the ass but you know, you got to take them too. So, anyways, uh, I hope everybody's having a great season. Something I can do for you, shoot me a message. I'll do the best I can to get back with you. I'm, I type with one finger and uh, not very good at, at replying on Facebook to my messages. So, you, yeah, you might, you might just want to call. <laughs> so, I. Uh, I'm not getting better at that. I promise I'm trying to get better at the, doing the trap radio every week, but I'll be damned. I'm not getting better. I, I will answer the messages, you know, when I have time. So um, not that I don't appreciate some of you sending me messages, but, uh, you know, I, I ain't very good. But I, I type with one finger. You're like, you know, your, your trigger finger, you pull the trigger. That's the finger I, I type every single letter with that. Sarah, she's like, you know, uh, I mean, she can type out like a whole damn essay in like two seconds where I'm like still on the, where's the T, where's the H, where's the E, hit the space thing, then go back to E, you know, <laughs> oh, shit, technology, gotta love it, because it sure makes you feel dumb. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'll hopefully see you next week.